Today, I'm going to show you how to create this responsive navigation bar using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project, and the body tags are empty. In the CSS, I already declared several color variables and added some basic styling like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero. This video tutorial is going to show you all the code from beginning to end. So to get started, I'm going to jump inside of the body tags of the HTML. And to get started, I'm going to create a nav with a class of nav. This will hold the entire navigation bar. So for this navigation bar, I'm going to want to include a hamburger menu icon that will be visible in the mobile view. When the user taps on that, I wanted to transform into a close icon. So initially we have to determine what kind of HTML element we need for this kind of functionality. So for this element, I wanted to have one of two states. I either want it to be a hamburger menu or I want it to be a close icon. So for that type of element, it has one of two states. So I'm going to add an input with a type of checkbox because a checkbox has two states, either a selected or unselected state. If this is a brand new concept to you, I have an entire video just dedicated to this particular topic. So I'll link that video in the description below. I'm going to give this input an ID of nav checkbox and also a class of nav checkbox. I'm using BEM for the naming convention. So that's why I have nav here and I have nav underscore underscore for the elements. So I'm going to do that repeatedly through this project. Next, I'm going to create an input for the label. So I'm going to create a label and it will be for that nav checkbox. And for this element, I'm going to give it a class of nav toggle. For this label element, I want it to have two icons within it. One of them to represent the hamburger menu and the other one to represent the close icon. So I already picked out two icons that I like. So I'm just taking these icons and I'm adding them into the project. So that first SVG has a class of menu to represent the hamburger menu. And the second one has a class of close to represent the close icon. And so if I click on the label area, it actually will check and uncheck that checkbox. So we're going to take advantage of that functionality for our project. Next, I'm going to work on the actual nav menu. So beneath this label, I'm going to make an unordered list with a class of nav menu. And for this unordered list, I want it to contain four list items. So I'm going to create a list item with an A tag within it, and I'm going to multiply that by four. So that way it instantly creates four list items. And for right now, I'm just going to add a placeholder for the link address. So that very first item, I actually want it to be the logo for this company. So I'm actually going to add an SVG here. So now we can see the logo for the company on the website. And then the other elements will be pages on the website. So I'm going to have an about work and contact page. So that's actually all of the HTML that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within the CSS. So jumping inside of the CSS, first I'm going to increase the font weight to 700. Normally I wouldn't assign a heavier font weight to the body, but because this design will only include the navigation bar, I'm just going to add it to the body. And then I'm going to set a universal color to a dark gray. And then I'm going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height. Next, I'm going to work on the navigation bar. So again, I gave that first nav element a class of nav. And so all of the elements will be contained within this nav class. So I'm going to write dot nav to reference that element. And first I'm just going to set a border bottom to one pixel solid and a light gray. Next, I'm going to work on the toggle, which is the label for the checkbox. So here I'm going to write and underscore underscore toggle. And the reason why I can do this is because I added SCSS as a preprocessor here, which allows me to nest CSS elements. And for this toggle, I'm going to set the position of it to absolute. I'm going to set the cursor to pointer because I want it to be clear that it's interactive. I'm going to set a margin 
top and bottom to zero REM, left and right to one REM. And I'm going to set the right value to zero because I want it to be all the way to the right hand side. So now we can see these elements are pushed towards the right side of the page. And then beneath that, I'm going to work on these SVGs. So within that label, remember I have two SVGs, one for the menu icon and one for the close icon. So here I'm going to reference those SVGs and I'm going to set the width to 1.5 REM and I'm going to set the fill to a particular gray. Now, initially I'm going to create the mobile view and then I will add a media query for the desktop view. So for the mobile view, I actually want this icon to be visible on landing, but I don't want the close icon to be visible. I only want the close icon to be visible if the menu is opened in the mobile view. So here I'm going to reference that close icon by referencing its class. And then I'm going to set the display of it to none. And then for that menu icon, I'm also just going to add a margin top of 0.2 REM. Next, I'm going to work on the checkbox. So again, we have that input type of checkbox, which is this element. So if I tap on this label, it turns that checkbox on and off. However, we don't actually want that checkbox to be visible in the final product. So I'm going to reference it in the CSS and set the display of it to none. Next, I'm going to start working on the actual menu. So within the HTML, I have an unordered list with a class of nav menu. So here I'm going to write and menu. And for this element, I'm going to set the display of it to flex with a flex direction of column. And that's because initially I'm going to design the mobile view and then we will design the desktop view after this. I'm going to set the gap to two REM and I'm going to align the items in the center. I'm also going to add a margin here of one REM. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the actual list. So by default, we do have these little bullets next to each list item. So I'm going to want to remove that. So here I'm going to reference each list item and I'm going to set the list style to none. And then I'm going to reference the first child. Here, the icon for the company is the first child. And I want it to have a particular alignment that's different than the other elements in the mobile view. So for that first child, I'm going to set the margin right to auto. So in that way, it will be pushed all the way to the left side of the screen. Then I'm going to reference the A tag, which represents the links. And I'm going to set the text decoration to none and the color to inherit. So that removes the underline and the blue color. And then I'm going to increase the font size to 1.2 REM. So now it's a bit bigger. Next, I'm going to work on the logo icon. So I'm going to reference the SVG and I'm going to set the width of it to 1.5 REM. And I'm going to set the fill to a particular gray. So now that icon's looking much better. Now, initially, we don't want these links to be visible. We only want them to be visible when the user taps on this hamburger menu. So going back up here under the list items, I'm going to set the display of them to none. So that hides them from view, but I always want the logo to be visible on the page. So under that first child, I'm going to set the display of it to block. So now the logo is visible, but the links are not visible yet. Great, so the next thing we have to do is add some functionality. So when the user taps on this icon, then they will see the links to the other pages. So the way that I'm going to do that is by taking advantage of this label for the checkbox. So underneath this, I'm going to reference the ID of nav checkbox because that represents the actual checkbox in the design. And so when this input type is checked, I want it to transform how the page looks. So here I'm going to reference the ID of nav checkbox. And for that checkbox, I want to know when it is checked. So here I'm going to write colon and then checked. And if it is checked, meaning that someone tapped on this label, I want the links to be visible on the page again. So here I'm going to add a sibling selector and I'm going to write the unordered list with a class of nav menu. And for that element, I'm going to reference the list items. So this may be a little confusing, but I'm going to explain it. So when that input of type checkbox is actually checked, meaning someone tapped on this label, I want it to change the nav menu. Now remember, earlier we set the display of it to none because we didn't want the list items to be visible on landing. Well, now we do want them to be visible. 
So I'm going to reference the unordered list of class nav menu. And within there, I wanted to reference the list items. And instead of having it display to none, I'm going to set a display to block. So here I'm writing display block. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this label, I will actually see the list items again. I tap on it and now we can actually see the list items. And if I tap on it again, it should unselect the checkbox and then they should disappear. So I tap on it again and they're gone. So this is a really cool interaction that you can add to your page design just by using a checkbox. So I like this functionality so far, but I actually want it to change from being a hamburger menu. As we can see, when we tap on it, it stays as a hamburger menu. And when I tap on it again, it still is a hamburger menu. But in my label, I added two SVGs, a menu icon and a close icon. So I actually want the close icon to be visible when this is tapped. So I'm going to basically copy and paste some of this functionality. I'm going to still reference when that checkbox is checked, but here I want to modify the label. So I'm going to reference the label with a class of nav toggle. And for that close icon, I want it to be visible here. So I'm going to reference the close icon and set the display of it to block. Then for that menu icon, I'm going to set the display of it to none. So it's hidden. So I'm basically repeating the code, but referencing the menu SVG and setting the display of it to none. So now I'm going to tap on this and it changes into a close icon. And when I tap on it again, it turns back into the hamburger menu. Great, so the mobile design is completely done. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is add media queries. So when it's in desktop view, the hamburger menu goes away and the links are always visible. So beneath this, I'm going to add code for the desktop view. And here I'm going to write at media only screen and a particular minimum width. And for this, I'm going to reference the nav class. And within here, I'm going to reference the toggle because I don't want the label to be visible in the desktop view. So I'm going to write and toggle. And I'm going to set the display of it to none, which hides it from view. And then I'm going to write and menu. For that menu, initially we had the flex direction set to column, but now I'm going to change it to be a row. So here I'm going to write flex direction row. And then for the list items, I always want them to be visible. So here I'm going to set the display of them to block. So now they're visible. So there you go. Now we have the desktop and the mobile view completely working. So there you go. That's how I created this responsive menu using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.